There we go, okay. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the WAN Show. I was late because I was gaming in VR. That's it. That's it. That's the only excuse that's I not, have. That's it. That's all. But I was actually making a video about gaming in VR, and it's really cool. So, do you know about the latest updates to the Oculus? Okay, you know what? We'll talk about. We'll talk about it later. It's, yeah. The Oculus Quest is even cooler now. We got subjects. Yeah, we got them. We got them topics. Those titles. Apple rumored to be working on a five thousand dollar gaming machine. Necessary. Um, California's new data and privacy rights go into effect. And just, there's, there, there's a Segway, like, wheelchair thing. But it's not it's, a wheelchair. No. It's more of a chair on wheels. Yeah. If that Looks makes like, sense. Looks like a throne on wheels. What else we got? Um, also, uh, airdrop for Android, but only for some Chinese brands. And that's about it. Okay. Yeah, we're definitely gonna want to chat Not about the uh, like cool stuff, like the Oculus Quest updates and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's roll that intro. And my keyboard. What about your keyboard? It's dead. No, the the Team Liquid signed one. Wow, the cheapest man alive might have to actually replace a piece of hardware. I'm gonna try to fix it. For the of course you are. And <sighs> the intro time. <laughs> Brought to you by Squarespace, Display, and ViewSonic. ViewSonic. Okay. First of all, guys, I gotta address this comment I just saw in the chat. Wow, Linus is really warming up to VR since last year. I always liked VR. <laughs> it was never a matter of me not liking VR. The issue was that VR had inaccessibility problems. And I said, I said in my Oculus Quest review that I never saw that coming. Like that degree of optimization, the oh, okay. amount of inside, the, the accuracy of their inside out tracking, I didn't see it coming. And I had seen things already that led me to believe that it wasn't going to be possible. By the way, the WAN show today is shot on red uh, because- I didn't even of, notice, what? <laughs> all of our C200s are, uh, are heading down to CES, so they're all it packed up. It looks great. Yeah, <laughs> so what, usually we shoot it on a C200, but uh, you know, if you notice the WAN show was looking real sharp today, nice we're, nice we're live sharp. streaming on YouTube on a, <laughs> how much is that one? That and Flowplane and Twitch. We paid 30 grand for that camera. Hey Brandon, what's that lens worth? It's a three thousand dollar lens, okay? You got like, uh, you know, two hundred dollar cable to attach the monitor for the camera over somewhere else. Doesn't matter. The point is, let's talk about Apple's rumored five thousand yeah. dollar gaming machine. So <clears throat> this was posted on the forum by William CLL, and I'll give you guys the breakdown. Then I'm sure we're gonna have a fair bit of discussion about this one. According to market rumors, Apple plans to launch an esports PC. Next year, with a unit price of up to five grand. According to supply chain sources, it may be a large screen all-in-one or a large screen gaming laptop. It's expected to be announced at WWDC next June. Now, there are some reasons to be suspicious. There are some games, like Rocket League, Fortnite, and World of Warcraft, that do work on Mac. But- Definitely you, not most. You can't get consumer GPUs from NVIDIA in Apple products. Um, and that doesn't look like it's gonna be clearing up anytime soon. NVIDIA just formally dropped CUDA support in Mac OS recently. I don't think that's a huge deal because <clears throat> it's probably not gonna be a user replaceable GPU anyways. Uh, yeah, okay, that's true. But, okay, you know what? Forget it. That's all the information that we really have. We don't know much. Yeah, we don't really, okay. So maybe that is a big deal. We know that there are compatibility issues. Yes. But we also know that with Apple's push, with the arcade, and trying to get better games on the App Store, uh, uh, with Apple's recent push is- They seem to care more suddenly. They seem to care an awful lot about gaming, even if they aren't, or haven't up until this point, been willing to engage with gaming the way that gamers want to do it, or the way they that could, the rest of the industry does it. They could develop like a, a, a gaming launcher that has like 
container set up to run games in it that aren't natively supported by Apple. They could do that. People do that on Linux all the time. I wonder, Sup, yeah. Socky. Yeah, Proton, like Wine. Wine, yeah. But the problem with that... I've got a friend who I think it's his hobby to, to see, like, what he can force to work in Linux. But would... In terms of gaming. Okay, hold on a second, though. But would that necessarily even be feasible for Apple? Like, I know Steam is a big name that has worked on a compatibility layer. Yeah. But... I don't think why, okay. What are, okay, maybe you can maybe I don't think know they something do about it for this. everything. What are the legal ramifications of oh. emulating oh. someone else like uh like if it's a direct X only title, are you allowed to just like I don't yeah, I don't think that's a problem. Because you you'd just be setting up a communication layer so that DirectX can like uh, I mean, DirectX would be an issue. I yeah, guess. I would think so. And Microsoft would have exactly zero a, motivation to yeah, facilitate yeah. this. There's a decent all. amount of games that can run in open with, that can run with OpenGL, even if they are DirectX based. Yeah, or Vulkan. But even even Vulkan, I'm not aware of any Vulkan there's support for There's very few Vulkan Mac games. OS. Yeah, I don't know. That's going to be an issue. But like, it's I, I could see them doing something. And again. Yeah, it's Apple, so I, I would be very surprised if they even cared about making it compatible with all the yeah, games. Yeah, maybe they just wouldn't care about, you know, your Doom or your Counter-Strike or whatever the case may be. Maybe as long as they've got, like, FIFA... They might care about Counter-Strike. <sighs> because I bet you Steam would work with them. I bet you Steam would work with them. Okay, yeah, Valve Because Steam Val likes being, care. like, all the platforms. Yeah, that's true. I mean, they were one of, they were one of the first to really make even some kind of an effort to yeah. bring gaming to yeah. Apple. Back before Apple had clued into like that gaming was a multi-billion dollar a year <laughs> industry. Um, so yeah, I, I think I think they would probably try to get Dota. They would probably try to get uh, Counter-Strike. Sure. Both of those games, Steam, Valve, I don't think big big issue there. Um, I think they could get most of the okay. big esports games. So let's move on in the discussion. And let's say, assuming then, that Apple gets the software compatibility figured out to the point where there are enough gaming experiences on the platform. I mean, they've shown that they're willing to dump in the kind of money like they did with their Apple Arcade, yeah. where yeah, yeah. like they will just basically hand gigantic sackfuls of money to game developers and say, okay, make a game. We need we need games. Like bring bring it on. We want games. So they've they've shown a willingness to do that. So let's let's assume that Apple manages to create through partnerships or through just basically buying game studio time yeah. enough content for their platform. Let's talk about the hardware. <clears throat> yeah. What could possibly make someone buy an oh, Apple gaming fuck. machine? And let's approach it two different ways, okay? Let's start with the laptop. What could make what could motivate you to buy an Apple gaming laptop? I, <laughs> I don't want to <laughs> Okay, motivating me to buy a gaming laptop in the first place is going to be really hard. Very recently, my Razer Blade just decided it doesn't have a battery anymore. I don't know why. Um, They're pretty much all dying now. Yeah. Yeah, like John's is dead. Um, it's, okay. Dennis's screen flickers. Fair, at this point, it's kind of been a little while. It's been 3 years. Yeah, I don't think it's, that's really enough. That's fair. Okay. I mean, when I used to sell laptops, I told people to expect only three years. Fair enough. Um, and it is a gaming laptop. Right, so, so you you're just not sure. surprised because you are inherently biased against laptops. Yeah. You don't, Game, I, don't, okay. I don't like gaming laptops. I, I don't like that segment. Oh, your mic pack. My prompter remote. Oh, nice. Um, I, I always expect gaming laptops to fail early. I just fail hard. Yeah. Okay. I, I worked in retail selling computers for a while, and I just saw the not as long as you did, but like I just saw saw the amount of failure in the gaming laptop segment. Fair enough. And, and like failure in laptops in general was already really high. And I can tell you now that as a even as a computer salesman when I was working. Uh, if people came in and they wanted to buy like a three thousand dollar gaming laptop, yeah. I would usually try to convince them to buy a basic laptop and like a sick gaming rig. Yes, I'd that's be like the exact move I tried to play. Because especially back then, like remember, I was working in the retail store like two thousand eight. 
2007. <laughs> like back then, gaming laptops were a joke. Like they've gotten a lot better. They have. In I, and I will, I will give them that. They've for gotten sure. a lot better. Yeah. But they used to be. So okay, they're big right now. They used to be giant. Yeah. Like you, like, you'd have to get these backpacks that had these massive compartments. Literally 20 minute battery. <laughs> yeah. Like when it was too. new. Oh, if you're playing man. a game, like it was, it was not a good time. No. Um. My, my old bamboo laptop, say what you will, still works. That's true. Um, yeah. And there was a guy who bought an Asus, sorry Asus, there was a guy who bought an Asus gaming laptop around the same time as me. Yeah. Before the end of that year of school, not the semester, but the year of school, yeah. his laptop was dead. And my, my laptop from that same time frame still works. So like, uh, I just, I don't know. That's that's way too small of a sample size, but like I just I would be way more interested if there was an external okay, GPU Fine, let's go. But let's talk about the AIO because personally I consider that to be more realistic anyway, okay um, Oh like oh, so you think it's gonna okay if it was gonna be something I think it's gonna be an AIO or it's gonna be both I don't think they just do a gaming laptop so gaming AIO sense. from laptop from from Apple. Let's let's talk what kinds of specs we might expect. There's no way that it's going to be HEDT because that Intel doesn't even position those as gaming processors or as as gaming devices, uh, gaming processors anyway. So it'll be something whatever the tenth gen equivalent of a 9900K is. So that's a 350 400 dollar processor. I I promise soon, Nick. Sorry. Let me just let's get through this topic. So it's a four hundred dollar. <laughs> So it's a four hundred dollar processor. Uh, you're gonna need, you know, a hundred bucks or a couple hundred bucks for some RAM. They're gonna put a, a decent display on it. You know, Apple has dabbled in high refresh rate displays, like on the iPad Pro, yep. for example. So I think they do a high refresh rate display. Yep. I think we don't get a Radeon Pro. I think we just get, you know, standard RX whatever graphics. Yeah. Um, but have that's nice storage. It's gonna be a few hundred dollars more. It'll have it'll have fine storage. Um, so I think Apple's actual parts cost ends up in the neighborhood of like, you know, two grand for what is effectively like a decent gaming rig. And then remember too, if it's going to top out at five grand, it probably starts at around 3,500. So they could make a healthy margin on say, something oh, like that. Oh, up to five grand. Okay. Yeah, up to five grand. And I'd imagine that's with like a ton of RAM and a ton of storage. Um, so... <sighs> It'll have kind of crummy specs for the price, assuming that they target around you know 3,500 starting price. If they do 29.99, it might not even be that bad. It'll have say what you will about Apple's reliability and customer support. It'll have Apple's reliability and customer support. It'll have a color accurate, like probably very high quality display, um, and it'll like perform fine. So this, I wonder if this would revive the segment of like kids convincing their parents to buy a computer because it's cool for them too, which like I think hasn't really been a thing for a while. Oh, interesting. So you know what? We if you need a new computer, Dad, then this Mac can do. Get this one. You can do really cool design work on it or whatever. So let's fire up Apple's website here, because maybe honestly, maybe we're overthinking this. Maybe it's just a matter of going to apple.com, seeing what find, a five thousand finding yeah. finding a Mac. Yeah. Uh, so here, where's the iMac? Because it's not going to be iMac Pro. That's HEDT. Or excuse me, that's Workstation, but basically the same same business, different pile. Um, okay, let's let's buy an iMac. <laughs> Did you guys finish working on it in time? Wait. Did you return the? No, we're stuck with it for now. <laughs> okay. Okay, so... Those are starting prices, yeah? Yeah, so pretty much, I mean, the if they, if they just bumped the graphics card, right? So instead of a Radeon Pro 580X, we get like a, you know, 5700 or something like that. Maybe that actually only puts us to $2,500. So what do we get? We get eight gigs of RAM, we get a two terabyte fusion drive. We get a Core i5 six core processor. Um, we get maybe not a Retina 5K display. Maybe we get like, cause remember Apple has like custom timing controllers and stuff. So they could potentially do 4K 120 Hertz or maybe even higher. Maybe they do 4K 240 Hertz for all I know or whatever. Right. Yeah. 
Um, we get a couple of Thunderbolt <clears throat> 3 ports. I mean, is that a terrible gaming computer that mom can also, you know, look I mean, up her Facebook price, and, yeah, you know, her like, iMovie or whatever? But it'll do more than fine in basically all esports games. So right they now. put a they, they put a space gray, you know, they put a dark chassis on it. Yep. Put like I don't know if Apple would ever do like a lighting effect. I don't think so. Maybe they do like a cool backing on it. Maybe they, do, they update they do, the ID. They do lighting effects because they light up the Apple logo. Yeah, but that's like back when that was cool. Now it's not cool anymore. They haven't done that in a while. Okay. It's been it's been a hot minute since they've done that. Yeah. So it would be kind of cool if they brought it back and it was RGB. And remember, here's another thing. This gaming Mac. Basically all they have all you have to change about a computer to make it gaming is put a decent graphics card in it. Yeah. We all know that. So this this gaming Mac, all they have to do is update the ID a little bit. Um, maybe they uh, may, maybe they put a better graphics card in it to start. Maybe they don't even. What maybe do they just start at 580x. It's not like it's incapable of gaming. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and then even if you wanted to run Windows only games, it's not like Boot Camp isn't a thing that exists. Ooh, I don't think they do that. No, like it wouldn't go by default or anything, but it's oh, like- Oh, as a user, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's not like you can't do that. So they could, with a straight face, say, hey, we built all these partnerships. You can play all these games. The performance is, you know, <laughs> well, however much better than the non-gaming Mac, because that's definitely the comparison they'd want to draw. <laughs> and it starts at only- Twenty four ninety nine for a gaming computer with the monitor, with everything. It's all included. It's ready to rock. It, it's got a 200 hertz refresh rate, 4K display for the greatest <laughs> graphics. Here's a bit of an interesting question, too. Peripherals. Ooh. iMac, they always give you mouse and keyboard. What would an Apple gaming keyboard I look don't like? Know. Is there, like, does anyone on Apple's design team game? <laughs> like, do they venture out of their own? cavities to see what you know the rest of the world is doing i mean i, I realize i must be generalizing it's just everyone at apple can, just has a way of making sure that everyone who actually is public facing has their nose so far up their own butt that you just like you can't take them seriously as like actual people <laughs> like, yeah yeah that's kind of true <laughs> Like I just I have a hard time imagining I them design. just like all I have ever done in my entire life and all I ever do in my free time is design. I live and breathe design. Yeah. It's like okay. Okay. Yeah, sure. Um yeah, I don't know. I I think the peripherals would be very interesting. I would be kind like, of surprised if they just shipped standard ones. And like watching Apple's upper brass talk about gaming. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's like <laughs> Oh. I, have you ever even played like Especially like <laughs> competitive gaming, not not phone gaming, because yeah. they're they're I don't even remember what it's called at this point, but they're their mobile phone gaming thing. Which one? Just the service. Arcade. Arcade. Yeah, that's an overly simple name that I can't believe I forgot. But anyways, Apple Arcade. I could see them talking about that. Yes. Yeah. But like casual normie, games. normie gaming. Mm. Yeah, I, I, I've just never, and when they talk about things like augmented reality and they bring up like, they bring up game developers to do these demos, they're kind of like, the heck is that? Like, ooh, ooh, <laughs> cool. Like, it looks like, it looks like my, you know, my grandpa trying gaming for the first time. Like, I just, it just, it ha it's not credible. Um, so I, I just, I have, they must have people internally who get it. I mean, I, Anand works there. I was, I was like gonna say, there, there's tech. going like, to be, they're yeah. a big enough company, there's going to be enough people there that get it. But like... Who's making the actual decisions? Exactly. That's the tough thing. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe what we end up, do, do we end up with like a magic mouse that's like <laughs> lower latency? Because Apple has, de like they have so much engineering resources at their disposal that if Apple did a gaming PC, I believe they could do a great gaming PC. I mean, you look at the way that they improve the latency over Bluetooth on their devices. It's like, wow, you guys actually do something with the R&D money that you spend. They spend huge money on R&D. But like, if all we got was a magic mouse that's like lower latency and black or something, it's like, oh, man. I just like, know I just, like way back, even in the keyboard head community, yeah. there was a certain amount of respect for the Apple desktop keyboards. 
Yeah, there was. I think that's okay. That respect, there I think was. sometimes you respect what you're used to. Sure, but like they're it, not amazing. They're, they're from quite a ways back. If you were going for pure typing speed, a lot of people use them. Okay, that's true. Really short travel, laptop style. You, so I'm, that's I'm the not one necessarily saying, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fair. I'm enough. not necessarily saying on the like uh, the gaming side of the keyboard enthusiast community, but like purely typists, a lot of them really liked the the old desktop uh, but laptop style Apple keyboards. Yeah, and it was a really solid keyboard. They could do something cool. I just I don't know. I'm being very hopeful. I. They could very likely screw it up. They could but also I'm being just very hopeful. pull an Apple and decide that they're going to dictate the terms of how gaming computers are made instead of listening to customer feedback. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think the pricing could end up being reasonable because in Apple's lower end products, like things like the Mac Mini, the Mac Mini starting price is not unreasonable. Like we just picked up another Mac Mini. We've got a new designer starting, and they're a Mac person. And I'm like, yeah, Mac Mini, like. It's like kind of awesome. It's yep. like around a thousand dollars to start U.S. Jaden likes them. Um, it's got like fine enough specs. You can get it with 10 gig LAN if that's important to you. Like if you're working with large files over the network or whatever yeah. else. Yeah. Like it's like kind of all the all the Mac computer I could ever need. <laughs> like if you want to run the OS, it's a great entry level. Uh, and yeah, I mean, even the iMac is not entirely unreasonable for a high quality 27 inch display, you know, Core i5, like, oh, Fusion Drive, well, that's pretty gross. Every computer should have an SSD in this day and age. There's a couple things on here that, like, I wouldn't, they're, they're almost yeah. certainly going to have an i7 option. Yeah. Um, the RAM's a little low. Yeah. I'm sure they're going to have an NVMe drive option. I could see it starting around 2,500 or three grand with specs that are not embarrassing. Yeah. And if they figure out a couple of Apple differentiating points, like that it has a super high refresh rate 4K display or like something, then I, I think there's there's a case to be made for it. Or they'll have some really cool name for it. Some really cool exclusive titles or something like that. They might get away with it. Uh, moving on to our next topic for the day. Oh, actually, uh, moving on to some LTT store updates. Do we have, is Nick was holding something. Uh, yes. Yes, sorry, sorry, Nick. Hey, what's up, dude? So LTT Stealth Hoodie is back in stock in every size. RAM T-shirt is back in stock. Processor is back in stock. Um, what's the one that's coming? GPU is coming next week. Yeah. Uh, and we have a new design that's coming next week that I was actually supposed to wear on the show today. No, but it's good. Then you I've... didn't wear it. It's fine. Oh. Wear it next week. Should I not talk about it? it? Well, wear it next week when we have it. Oh, yeah, wear it next week when we have it. It's Oh, but it's not on the store. OK, we totally fine. Show this to see if people like it. All right, all right. So Nick I and I are having a bit of a debate right now. We designed like team shirts for our staff to wear at CES. Okay. Um, they ended up being kind of cool, but I think they're kind of corporate looking. Okay. And so I said, look, I think they're kind of corporate. I don't think it makes sense to sell them. And Nick said, if people like it, why shouldn't we sell it? Without, without seeing it yet, I will say, yeah. So the the shirts that are often very very sought after, definitely from me, are any form of like staff or crew shirt. It doesn't say staff or crew though. No, I know, like but if it, it looks like really official, it could be all right. I don't know. All right, I'll show it to you. I'll show it to you first, and then then the audience. And I just want to get your reaction first. Okay, so that's the front. Okay. That's the back. Oh wow. Okay. Okay. Out of ten. Six. All right. Okay. So we'll take your guys' feedback That's now. Fine. There's the front. I will also say the only reason why I'm giving it like a, a six is because I think stuff like GPU and, and especially like processor are so cool. Right. See, that's the thing is, I don't think it has the sex appeal, but we'll, we'll, let, we'll take the audience's feedback. Uh, we should straw pull it, one out of 10. The entire chat is World War III. Um, so thank you all for that. Thanks. Great. Cool. Rate the shirt. Yeah. One. All right. Luke's setting up a oh, straw no. pull, guys. We're setting up a straw pull. In the meantime, I'm going to move on to our next topic here. 
Find the shirts. They're cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Nick. Yeah, I think it's pretty tepid, Nick. All right. Based on YouTube chat, anyway. I'll have a look at Hold Flow on. Plane. They tend to be a little more charitable. Ooh. Four, four, six, six, seven to eight. No 10 out of 10, though, ladies and gentlemen. Five, six, seven, five, okay, seven. Okay, Flow Plane got the poll. I'm going to Twitch now, then right. I'm going to YouTube all right, soon. All right. Yeah. We'll see how they feel after they see it during all of our CS content. Yeah, I know. Right. That honestly might pump it a little bit more. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, so this was posted by Delicious on the forum. Canada, uh, Canada's, <laughs> California's new data and privacy rights go into effect. Jeez. So in the absence of strong national legislation, California has enacted a landmark privacy law known as the California Consumer Privacy Act, or CCPA, which went into effect two days ago on January the 1st. It was passed unanimously in June 2018, and it's the first law in the U.S. to set up a comprehensive set of rules around consumer data, kind of like the EU's GDPR. It applies to any company that operates in California and either makes at least $25 million in annual revenue, uh, gathers data on more than 50,000 users, or makes more than half of its money off of user data. So basically, it's not designed for your little tiny startups that are just getting off the ground. It's, yeah. It seems like it's firmly targeting firms that are uh, kind of, they've, they've got their stuff together. They, they can afford to follow this law. Um, so for California residents, it creates a handful of new rights over their data, notably the right to know and the right to say no. So users can see what data companies have gathered about them, have that data deleted, and opt out of those companies selling it to third parties from now on. So here's an example. If you're reading a Wired.com article from a California IP address, you'll see a pop-up with a big button reading, do not sell my personal information. So we make a VPN company exclusively with servers in California. <laughs> Not actually a terrible business idea. <laughs> I mean, you could just use any other VPN and just use a California server. No, 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 no. Mind your details, Luke. But... Um, so anyway, if you click that button, like it's not like Wired was gonna immediately sell your data, like there. Like no one is just like giving them cash in exchange for user data, but they track your behavior what articles you read, for how long, etc. on Wired.com using cookies. And that information can go to a third-party vendor like Google AdSense, which combines it with similar data from other sites, to create a user profile for you that advertisers can target. So you know how that shoe ad can follow you all over the web. Um, that's how that works. So if you ask Wired.com to stop selling your data, you won't get those types of ads from them anymore, and your browser history on Wired won't factor into the types of ads you see elsewhere. Now, right now, there's no enforcement. That's going to start on July 1st, and the final regulations haven't been released, so it's an open question as to whether the enforcement will be robust enough for the law to actually make an impact, for anyone to actually stop doing this. Right. It grants Californians the right to sue companies for failing to take reasonable precautions to prevent data breaches, though, um, and also make sure that companies comply with the... Oh, and making sure that companies comply with the CCPA is the sole province of the attorneys. The at attorney a, at a certain office, point... Which has indicated it will only have the bandwidth to bring a handful of cases each year. At, at a certain point, okay. web companies are going to have to have departments that are entirely dedicated to... Complying with all the different consumer from all over the world protection. and every different state and every different province. I'm I not mean, saying this is a bad thing. This actually sounds wonderful. But like we're just, already running into this with taxation on Floatplane. We're running into this with everything on Floatplane. Yeah. Just like, the amount of like different angles, different new laws are coming from like it's it's tough. And like these it's not pointed towards startup whatever. You still have to be ready for it. Yep. And honestly, 50,000 users, like $25 million revenue or over half of your revenue coming from user data, those ones make a ton of sense to me. Yeah. 50,000 users is not a lot. Yeah. Like the other two make sense. Especially when you're doing, you know, like a big user drive where you're making your service free to use at first. You know, like, like Dropbox did way back in the day. Like you had a lot of really great features in Dropbox and on the free tier. Yeah. And now it's it's not anymore, and it's much more locked down because they've established themselves. Um, and so, you know, to me, 50,000 users, you know, you could do a soft launch and have 50,000 users overnight. And that doesn't necessarily mean, like you're in scramble mode figuring out everything else and at like, that how point. Do you, how do you define a user? That's way too vague in my opinion. Interesting. Go on. 
it, is it someone who visited the website at all? They technically use the website. If they scrolled at all, does that count as using? Does going to the website at all count as using? Do they have to have an account? Do they have to pay? Like, what, what defines a user? Right. I mean, it sounds to How me... How do you di differentiate? Like, you could nuke... You could, like, bot traffic nuke a site with this. Right. No, nah, 50,000 users. There you go. You're screwed. Lol. And then, you know, sue them for using yeah. the data or something. Boom. I see what you mean. So, like, it's... What is it? How do you define that? Too vague. Don't like it. I, what I actually would you do like the though? I like the idea of yeah. I like the idea. Well, remove the users thing. Make it revenue or uh, whatever the other one was. The first two that we liked. Yeah, like remember. over half of your revenue coming from yeah, user data. Yeah, sure. Nuke that. So what was the other metric? Gonna, over was, a certain amount of it money. It was over $25 million a year revenue. Both of those sound great because you're making that much money. Yep. Then you can figure this out. Well, yes and no. Because you could be doing $25 million a year revenue, but that doesn't necessarily mean if in the Silicon Valley model, you're not necessarily making any money. True. But if you're, if you're cycling that much through, you probably have the dev horsepower to make this. This doesn't sound way too complicated. I mean, really the thing though too is that it's not just dev. Like you said, it's gonna come down to also Legal. needing to keep track yeah. of all these different regulations. And when yeah. you could be dealing with like, if the attorney general's office is already saying they're only gonna be able to bring a handful of cases a year, like they're basically saying they're going after the whales. Yeah. I mean, what if one of the, the usual suspects, you know, your Facebook and Facebooks and Googles of the world, what if they don't do anything? And what if they, what if they make it all the way down the list to someone who isn't ready for it? Who this like, isn't really designed for. Doesn't have a gigantic legal department. I, I don't know. I mean, if, if you are making a bunch of your revenue off of selling user data, yeah. then I don't really feel that bad. Like Just if, gonna be completely honest. If there's anything that we've learned from our dealings with the CRA, a lot of the time when you're dealing with a government agency, it just, the, the spirit of it the law sucks. doesn't matter at all. Yeah. Like it just, they just don't even care. You go, well, like, hold on, back up. This was designed for scenario X. And here are the ways in which what's going on here is very, very different from that. And therefore it doesn't make sense. Don't yeah. care. And? They just don't care. So maybe the way that this law was designed to go after companies that really are just out there harvesting user data and making money off of it, um, maybe it was designed for that, but maybe they end up grabbing someone who has 50,000 users and is just like barely scraping by or whatever and they end up like going under. That's why I like the idea. I'm concerned about the execution, but I like the idea. And here's the thing, guys, is that you might say, okay, well, the real solution is for there to be enough of this legislation that's robust enough that collecting users' data and using it to advertise to them is just gonna go away. I can tell you right now, unequivocally, that that will destroy the internet as you know it. A banner ad on a website without any of the kind of performance metrics and tracking is and worth, effectiveness like, that Facebook and mm. Google have effectively used to b drive value for their business and for their customers is worth basically nothing now. Like nothing. So every website you use, every content creator that you view pretty much wouldn't exist without the evolution of advertising that has taken place on the web. And we're not saying whether or not you're okay with that. You, yeah. might, you might be okay with that. You might be that. totally okay with that. But it will change the landscape of the internet. Whether you think that's good or bad is entirely up to you. But. With that said, I mean, doomsayers have said things like that before. I mean, uh, about things like Adblock. Adblock still hasn't destroyed the internet as you know it. Unless, I mean, journalism's taking a bit of a beating. Yeah. So there it, is it, that. Adblock has, I, w I would argue that Adblock has substantially changed the internet. You see that scary stuff where China is now state subsidizing news agencies in other countries? <laughs> like creating their own Chinese backed news agency that just operates like any other news agency except they don't have to worry about making money because they're just backed by the Chinese government? <sighs> <laughs> It's interesting. Isn't uh, uh, RUTV 
that, but Russian? Um, well, it's different. I don't know anything state, about state it. State-sponsored really. media within a country is a thing in a lot of places. You've got your RUTV, you've got your Chinese state media, your North Korean state okay. media, your Fox News, you've got your whatever. Just kidding. I, I know Fox News is technically independent. Um, but this is different. This is China actually building news companies, like news agencies, on other country soil and just like making sure that they don't run out of money effectively right. Interesting. Um, so it's a it's a it's going to be a fascinating way for them to control the narrative um anyway uh what else we what else we one got for, quick thing oh yeah sure let's jump back to the shirt oh yeah right okay luke screen here we go these are the results Oof. So that's a solid five. When you got five, four, six, and seven in the top four results, basically nobody really likes it. <laughs> so you've got the charitable 6% that are giving it a 10. You've got the more um, honest, you know, 50 votes that gave it a nine. And then most people are just like, eh. Yeah. All right, cool. Actually, uh, speaking of, you know, making sure that at least more people voted ten than funded. one. Yeah, I guess that's something. <laughs> hey. Um, yeah, speaking of staying funded, this show is brought to you by Squarespace. We use Squarespace, no joke, we do use it. LTXExpo.com and LinusMediaGroup.com. Ooh, LTXExpo.com has some updates and stuff. Really? That are coming, coming. Oh, oh, um, oh. wow. I think we announced dates. Oh. Uh, there's a there's a complete redesign that I just had a look at, and I don't know if it's up yet. Oh yeah, I think it is up. Look at that, LTX Expo is up. So LTXExpo.com like and uh, LinusMediaGroup.com are both built using Squarespace. Squarespace is a simple way to get an online presence up and running quickly. They've got tons of great looking templates, and uh, they've got. Uh, sorry, wife just showed up. Wow, we started WAN show so late. How long do we have? We're supposed to leave now. Cool. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but the power is flickering. I did notice the power was flickering. The UPS is. So we might not last much longer anyway. So quickly, Squarespace. If you need help, Squarespace offers webinars, a full series of help guides, or you can contact their 24-7 support via live chat and email to help you build your site. Go to squarespace.com forward slash WAN and use offer code WAN to save 10%. The show is also brought to you by Displate. Displate is the magnet mounted metal poster provider. No more mounting tools are required and you don't need to put any holes in your wall to mount a Displate. It attaches to your wall with magnets. They've got over six, oh wow, they've updated these talking points. Over 600,000 designs from 30,000 artists and they're available in different sizes. They plant a tree for every Displate you purchase and so far they've planted 11 million trees, which I guess means they've wow. sold a lot of friggin' displays. Yeah. <laughs> here at Linus Tech Tips, we have our own prints. So I'm just gonna pull up one of those for you all here. Where's our portraits? There they are. They look freaking sick, in my opinion. I think James's is the best. That one is what pretty is this amazing. Duck. I love it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. You know, it's a duck, whatever, who cares? Um and you guys can check them out at lmg.gg slash displaywan and use offer code LTT to save 15%. At least that's in the lower third. I don't actually see it in my talking points anymore, so I guess we'll find out soon <laughs> enough, won't we? The ViewSonic XG270QG is our next sponsor of the video. Well, ViewSonic, featuring this monitor. It's a 27-inch display, 1440. It's overclockable to 165 hertz, and this is really cool. It uses LG's low response time IPS panel. So this is that one millisecond response time panel that we liked so much when we originally looked at it, and it still looks great today. It's height adjustable with tilt, pivot, and swivel, and we've got an upcoming Linus Tech Tips video this Sunday showing off this monitor. Oh yeah, that's right, we do. And it's uh, we do like this sick, Custom water cool build in a, in a singularity case. It's That's actually cool. really nice. Check it out today at the link in the video or podcast description. Just, are you, are you done sponsors now? Yes. Just before we move on. Yes. One of the reasons I wanted to bring up the keyboard thing is because in diagnosing my keyboard, I was taking it apart and I was trying to look up the 
uh, brand of lube that I recommended way back in the day for yeah. lubing your switches. So I looked up my old keycap replacement guide, and in looking that up, I figured out that you guys did a wash your keyboard on the dishwasher video. We did. You missed a couple of things. <gasps> what did we miss? The lube. Missed the lube. If you wash your keyboard on the dishwasher. Oh, all your yes, 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 gone. yes. Actually, there was more left on it than you'd think. Oh, okay. Yeah, we did check for that. We should have mentioned it, though. We should have specifically called it out. What else there did is we get also. Wrong? Oh, because we didn't run it hot. If we had run it hot, for sure the lube would have melted. Do you have like heat determining things on your dishwasher? Yeah. Uh, does everyone have that? I don't know. I don't think so. I've specifically mentioned it in the video, though, oh, okay. that I ran it on cold. Okay. Or at least okay. I did okay. in the footage. I don't know if it made it into the video. I don't remember that, but I didn't, like, okay. I wasn't fine tooth combing anyway. All right. Um, and then, there, there, I mean, there's a few things. Like, uh, the, you probably didn't have distilled water going through your dishwasher. No, I didn't. Yeah. That would be better. They all survived. They did. And I know I appreciate that you did more than one. I will. Uh, that was <laughs> did a bunch. That was cool. I do appreciate that. But you could still get minerals from the water. Absolutely, and then, you could. Yeah. Um, there even the, I know you, the PBT does have a very low melting point, and I'm happy you pointed that out because no one should do that. But even ABS plastics can warp. That's true. We didn't have any warpage though. I. Yeah. We also specifically ran it on cold yeah. for that reason. Yeah. So I don't know. But any, the, the lube was the main one I wanted to pick. Okay, yeah. yes. We we should have called that out. Um, we were lucky, though, in that our configuration and our test run, we didn't have any there is with There it. is, I do know of plenty of people that have done it. It's been fine. Right. But there are just some, like, I've you never should know of, of these risks before going I've never it. heard of anyone actually killing one. I've seen uh, warped plastics. That would be bad. But I've never, I've never actually heard of anyone say their keyboard straight up died from it. All right, there's just a couple more things that we have to chat about. LTX 2020, save the date, August 7th and 8th. Um, oh, right, oh, the new site is live. Okay, well, we ended up talking about that anyway, but <laughs> at any rate, there it is. I'm LTX excited. 2020, August 8th and 9th, Vancouver Convention Center. We're going to be in the big, newer side this year. 7th and 8th, and then you said 8th and 9th. Oh, wait. It's 8th and 9th. This... Oh, crap. 8th and 9th. 8th oh, it, and 9th. In the dock, it says 7th and 8th. In the dock, it's wrong. Yeah. LTX, August 8th and 9th. Yeah. Um, featuring DreamHack once again. Super excited. It's going to be awesome. We've got a whole bunch of information on the site that's been updated except for that. Uh, transportation might have information. Yay. There you go. There's good stuff there. So, yep. Yeah. Guys, want to see you there. We had a great, it was really great awesome. show last year. It was I genuinely think it's, We've got some amazing cool. booth ideas for this coming year. Vaughn, do you remember any of the new ones? Can I just like tease a couple of them? Uh, what was what was that stage challenge? Oh, okay. So this one, I had suggested that we have two PCs where yeah. um, there's something wrong with each of them. Yes, yes, yes. So on, cool. an on stage yeah. PC diagnosis. Is it the same face issue? Is the same issue? Yeah. The, the idea is the first to post. Yeah. First of all, that's yeah. pretty cool. So uh, that's going to be really fun. Um, got a lot of really great like that's panel cool. ideas. We're going to be inviting a whack ton of creators. Um, if you I guys haven't heard from me yet, it's because I haven't sent emails yet. Don't worry, I will send out emails. I was very excited uh, last year, and I was like pretty sure I was going to enjoy it more than PAX, and then I did by massive amounts, and that makes me way more excited for this year. Please come say hi. This year is going to be freaking awesome. I'm super stoked. All right, uh, and then... I also got a pimp, Carpool Critics. So we are experimenting with a podcast. It's Purely called, podcast. It's called Carpool Critics. You can find it Which, at- Which, by the way, yes. the float plane traffic, when you launch a video that says we're leaving float plane is crazy. We did? Yeah. The Carpool Critics, uh, we're gonna be going to podcast only thing, was titled, we're leaving float plane. So everyone got a notification Linus Tech Tips, we're leaving float plane. That was, uh, that was awesome. <laughs> the, the, the traffic spike was huge. Okay, then. It was a little misleading, um, but, you know. I think he's facepalming because that was not supposed to happen. I, I don't know who oh. cleared that, but I didn't clear that. Yeah, I didn't clear that. And that has yeah, I, it, there's a few people in the comments being like, wow, really clickbaity. But, you know, it was cool for us to see. Yeah, also, I don't see why they shouldn't just keep uploading it there anyway. 
Yeah. So okay. okay. We're also gonna be releasing audio only posts, guys. But yeah, we'll, we'll 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 okay. When are you guys gonna be done that feature? I don't know. Okay. Well. <laughs> Okay, so it's on Twitter, at Carpool Critics. You can head to carpoolcritics.libsyn.com to get all the deets about it. And basically, it's Riley, James, and David are kind of the core cast, but I would expect them to rotate in and out and have some other people in there. Uh, they're going to be talking about old movies, new movies, just kind of movie-related stuffs. Um, it's available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Casts, Spotify, and more. And uh, I was gonna say I know you have negative time, but I was hoping you were gonna be on the the Rise of Skywalker one. I honestly I think so. We we went and saw it together, and then yeah. we ended up sitting in his car in the <laughs> parking lot. I said five minutes. We ended up talking for about an hour just because we both had so much to unpack. Very many thoughts. Um, I'm just spamming chat with uh, Carpool Critics uh, links oh, here. Cool. I'll get the um, I haven't actually watched the Carpool Critics episode on Rise of Skywalker yet. I, don't, I just don't know how much I can... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. They had already recorded it by the time I saw the movie. Oh, okay. Because they went and saw it on release day. Release day. That makes um, sense. And honestly, I doubt that I would have had much to contribute because they seem to have all had pretty much the same... They seem to have all seen the same movie that I did. Now, okay, we're... Oh, man. Do I have time to go off on a short Star Wars tangent? <laughs> Uh, can, 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 is the building locked? Like, can you can you lock the building while I? Okay, all right. So, I took a lot of flack because I ranted at the end of Tech Linked about some of my issues with Rise of Skywalker. With one of the big ones being, spoiler alert. It's still not really a spoiler, but it's a small spoiler. Okay, so one of my my main issue with no, oh, that's hard to say main issue. One of my main <laughs> issues with Rise of Skywalker being this. Just pulling new force abilities yeah. Out, oh, of, yeah. out of you know a drawer or your butt or a pocket whenever you need one in order to solve a problem. And um, I took a lot of flack for people saying, well, um, actually, if you read the comics and watched all the shows, that, no, 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 hold on, hold on. If you read all the comics and watched all the shows, you would know that there are established times like force healing was established here and force this was established there and blah, 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 blah. So my problem with all of that is that, oh, oh, right. And one of the, one of the most like QED mf -er was posts was, well, it's always been that way. In A New Hope, moving things around with the force doesn't exist. It's only this um, ability to be superhumanly reactive so, so better reflexes and to, to know, so to know what's going to happen before it's going to happen. We can communicate over long distances and with the dead. Um, it, it, it guides us. It's a, it's a mystic thing. It binds the galaxy together. And that was really about it. And then early in Empire, so this was their like, um, actually, you know, when Luke grabs his lightsaber with the force, that's pulling force abilities out of his butt. And then there's Return of the Jedi when there's force lightning out of the butt. And then you've got, you know, the, the prequel trilogy where they pull lots of force things out of their butt. Okay, here's my response to that. All of that made sense because in A New Hope, Obi-Wan really, he's like an old man and like, you, you look at him trying to fight Vader, like he's <laughs> barely even standing at this point, okay? So the fact that he doesn't still, you know, do double flips or whatever, you could, you could kind of make an argument there. Luke is still learning how to use it. He's a novice. You can introduce new force abilities with Luke Skywalker throughout the original trilogy without it being a continuity error or, or, or breaking the rules of the, of the galaxy that they've, you know, laid out at all. As for the prequel trilogy, with the exception of just phenomenally stupid things like R2-D2 suddenly having a jetpack, um, <laughs> like when it comes to force abilities, well, yeah, you've got literal like gigantic schools dedicated to studying the force. All of that knowledge was like lost and stuff. Of course, they could do stuff that didn't exist I, anymore later. I had a bigger issue, and yeah. we, we talked about this. I had a bigger issue with magnitude. Okay, but okay, we we can, we can yeah sure that too. So it ties into magnitude though. Yeah, no, I, I so, hear you. So here we are. We're in the future where all that knowledge was like lost and stuff, and all those users were lost. And then there was this period where no, the entire force did not concentrate itself into one individual. Okay, so that didn't happen. And then we're like 
20, 30 years in the future, and we're still pulling new abilities out of our butt, even though all those many, many, gen for thousands of years, the Jedi Knights were the guardians of peace and justice. Thousands of years. We, we lost all that, but now within a couple of decades, we've got, you know, Jedi Masters suddenly being like, oh yeah, sure, like I'm a Jedi Master or whatever, even though I like didn't finish my Jedi Knight training, so however that works. <laughs> and like, I just, <laughs> it, it drove me nuts because even if you've got these comic books and you've got these shows that, that have established this stuff, you haven't established how Ray ended up being able to do it. The only reason why I'm not chipping in more is because I know we can't stay here forever. Yeah. <sighs> I was just explaining for people watching. I don't know. It just, it just, it, dr it drives me crazy because it takes all the stakes out of a conflict or out of a problem. When you know that just, I don't know, like Trail of the Force or something. I watched, a, I watched a video recently on it and I, I thought his explanation was pretty solid. It was, it was actually a video about the uh, Clone Wars animated series sure. because they're releasing a new season soon. I'm yeah. really excited about that. And they, they went off and said like, okay, so the, the original series is the foundation of your house. Right. The prequels, it's kind of like the the door and some of the fancy the siding, some of the stuff on the outside. Um, the the Clone Wars animated series is like the structural beams inside the house, and then Disney's series is like the "you live, you laugh, you love" sign on the wall. <laughs> okay, and I just thought that was great. <laughs> I just really liked that analogy. It was really good. Like it's pretty. <laughs> it's, a, it's a nice, it looks, it's, the calligraphy is perfect. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't think that, I, I don't think that they could have, I don't know, I don't know how I would have fixed it. That's, that's the by bottom the, line. By the time you're on that one, you're just kind of screwed. Yeah. And this yep. is something we... This we is something we talked about. Yeah. Like, the pacing of the movie was terrible because they were trying to, they, they were trying so to tie up... Two entire random series of events worth of movies, <laughs> yeah. random events and random characters, uh, utterly meaningless events and meaningless characters, and they're just like trying to tie it all up in like one movie, and then also stuff has to happen in that movie. And like, Kylo Ren is a terrible villain. <laughs> um, his arc is just terrible and boring. Um, I mean, you know what? I had a disagreement with, I think it was either David or Riley about, spoiler alert, about bringing back Emperor Palpatine. They were like, that was the worst thing they did in the movie. Palpatine, okay. Palpatine, whatever, I don't care. <laughs> um, so they said that was the worst thing they did in the movie. And I said, I think it was one of the smartest things they did in the movie because they had no villain with any gravity yeah. whatsoever. Who is it going to be? N no one. It's not Ren. It's not Snoke. Yeah, he's gone. So what, what could they possibly do? And there's been interviews, um, like George Lucas apparently told uh, Ian McDermid, I can't, I can't remember, I, I don't know how to pronounce his name, whatever, he told the actor that plays Emperor Palpatine that he was dead when he, when he got thrown down the shaft in Return of the Jedi. And so he was like, oh, I was surprised to like be alive again and stuff. <laughs> but like, what else could they possibly do? Yeah, yeah, I, uh... It was a mess. I think bringing Palpatine back was fine. I didn't. I didn't have very many issues with that part of the. Him being back in general wasn't a huge issue for me. His like, God lightning. Yeah. That was a, so yeah. I'm not well enough to walk on my own. <laughs> but, bah! like, like, like one minute later, you know, yeah. no problem. I hated how how important lightsabers were. Yep. <sighs> lightsabers should be super cool. But they should be a a, they like don't, a conduit. Yeah, they don't have power. Yeah. They're just a laser sword. Han Solo can wield one. They're, 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 like, they're, what? <laughs> it would have made more sense to me if Ray had just like gotten Force Lightning zapped and then just like blasted it back at him or something. That would have made more sense than like 
No, but one lightsaber is not enough to stop a force lightning attack, but two? Not to mention that it's from some guy that just disabled the entire sky. <laughs> like, I, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, what, what, like, yeah, it's like... Mace Windu blocks it. Like, if you're a ten-year-old, it's like, yeah, that was, like, super badass when Rey was like... <laughs> but that's it. It's like it was written by a ten-year-old for a ten-year-old. It's like, it's like they had kids in the schoolyard. Like, remember what it was like? When you're in elementary school and you're like, oh man, like, wouldn't it be cool if like you you had like a jet plane, but it like was like also so a big, dinosaur. and then it like hit the school and it like blew up like the whole block, but no one was there and we just didn't have to go to school for a week. That's how much sense <laughs> the action sequences in Star Wars: Rise of Skywalker make. And I think I think there's there's like. Okay, yeah, so Mace Windu blocks force lightning with his lightsaber, but you can tell it's taking an extreme amount of for, uh, force to hold it back, and I think there might be a little bit of, like, Palpatine was letting him because he wanted Anakin to have the moment. Yeah. Because that was an extremely important moment. Mace Windu even sees the, uh, the shatter point of that moment, but he thinks it's him taking down Palpatine. He doesn't think it's Anakin interrupting. Because he doesn't know why the shatter point's there. Anyways, yeah, no one cares. But. All right. I think that's pretty much all I have to talk about. The the Segway chair is, it looks terrible. I mean, Segway's not even Segway Why anymore. isn't got, it just a wheelchair? They got bought by, like, whoever. Uh, so here, there's a bunch of questions. and he, I don't know. Like, Why don't you just put a wheel on the front? They put wheels on the back just in case it rocks backwards. Like, what? I don't know, dude. Um, so yeah, it's a self-balancing egg-shaped two-wheeler, so you can cruise around it. It goes almost 40 kilometers an hour. Okay. Um, instead of being driven by leaning, it uses a joystick on the right-hand side of the seat. So you're basically like Professor Xavier, I guess. <laughs> uh, but you don't actually hover. Yeah. Um, the self-balancing technology will always keep the chair level. The two-wheel setup will allow for quick changes in direction, even while stopped. And there are three more small wheels visible on the underside of the chair for presumably moving it around while the motors aren't on. It was apparently inspired by the gyrosphere from Jurassic Park. And it's for sale to the public in 2021. No word on cost. Where would you park it? Like, where would you... How would you... Yeah. So, okay. Segway was acquired by rival Ninebot in 2015. Yeah, that's, uh, that's who acquired them. They had previously actually tried to get Ninebot's knockoffs banned from the US. So that was apparently the solution to that. Yay for, you know. Someone in chat said Ray had the power of every Jedi insider. So did Luke. So. Yeah, and also that's just stupid and makes no sense. Someone also said that Mace Window used uh, the power of the dark side. Yeah, Vap had whatever. It's not the point. I hear you though. It's cool. Made his character very cool. All right, Mr. Min, uh, it's the first time I can watch the live stream. Thanks for watching. Sorry, guys, I can only do the top ones this week because I really need to go. Steve says, I'm a maintenance planner learning to do coding for creating algorithms for AI to auto-schedule maintenance for a 1 million square foot manufacturing facility, basically planning myself out of a job. Any openings? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know what we would do with your skill set, but that sounds sweet. Um, <laughs> Chris says, got my Valve Index thanks to your recommendation a few weeks ago. Super happy with it. As always, your videos are great. Um, video thought projects with Raspberry Pi. I mean, the thing about Raspberry Pi is it's like, what video project isn't a Raspberry Pi project? So it's kind of hard. Uh, Rivius says, sorry for the incessant super chats. It's my first time catching you live in the years I've followed. Thanks for all the education, entertainment, and companionship. Oh, you're very welcome. <laughs> Uh, Gap to Granny. Have you checked out GJ's new first person view goggles? No, I haven't. Um, also got the float plane beta shirt, fits wonderful. Nice, beta squadron for life. And, oh, speaking of float plane, uh, okay, sorry guys, that's all I can do. Speaking of float plane, um, uh, 4K. all the things, yep, 4K, 4K, yearly. 4K yearly subscriptions. I don't think I put yearly prices in for the standard one, did I? I think you did. Okay, cool. So you didn't do the, yeah, anyways. So yeah. guys, you can subscribe at 4K quality. I think it's 10 bucks a month or $100 a year. Um, and then five and fifty. Yep, yeah. and it looks freaking awesome. How are the servers holding up? They're doing okay. Because we got new creators on too, don't we? Yep. How and many videos did you guys get uploaded? Uploading like, a lot. Yep, 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 yep. There's two different creators that have uploaded at least forty videos already. Sweet. Yeah. And how's it going? It's going all right. 
Go, go. It's going okay. You seem guarded. It's uh, there was some problems, but <laughs> it is going all right. The problems were addressed very quickly. The team's been doing great. Honestly, okay. everyone on the team has been awesome this week. Everyone is very responsive. Um, Dan got to flex his his abilities a little bit. C customer more care he, superpowers. Yeah, yeah, a little bit more than he normally gets to. Um, but yeah, every, everyone did awesome. Yuki like swooped in and saved two different situations while the call with the creator was live, which was awesome. <laughs> that was really cool. Um, yeah, it was it was great. Great week for Flipline. I won't keep you guys way too long. All right. But yeah. Thanks, guys. See you again next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye. Ravia says my face won one of four super chats red. Sorry. <laughs> that's that's two of five now. <laughs>